and welcome to Updated Autopsy Report, a podcast from Yotze Ben and Friends where we replay the entire Ace Attorney series with longtime fans and newcomers. I'm your host, Ben, and with me today is Desi. Hello. And two good friends of ours, Tiago. Yeah. And Rose. Hi. Desi and I are the longtime fans, and Rose and Tiago are the newcomers. We hope that through both of our perspectives as we play through the series, it will reveal new details and provide interesting commentary for a series that's near and dear to us. Today, we have all played through chapters one through four of, am I reading this right? Ghost Trick Phantom Detective. Yeah. Yes, dear listener, we are not playing an Ace Attorney game. But I would argue that we are separated from the series by mere threads. Uh, Ghost Trick Phantom Detective is a mystery detective puzzle game that was uh, created by Shu Takumi, the creator of the Ace Attorney series. If you pay any attention to video games, uh, you may know that recently a remaster of this game came out on practically every system under the sun. Uh, we hope that uh, you are playing it because we think it's pretty good. And I also think that it is relatively critical to understanding the whole package of a creator like Shu Takumi and his work. So given the uh, opportunity uh, to replay this game and the wonderful timing of the remaster, we decided it would be a good idea to do so. Uh, so, without any further ado, I'm going to jump into a summary of this uh, section of the chapters that we've played, and then we'll get into talking about the gameplay of this game and how it might differ from Ace Attorney and what we thought about it. The game opens in a junkyard with a man in a red suit slumped over dead. A spirit named Sissel awakens and upon seeing his dead body begins to try to figure out what happened to himself as he is so, so, so full of amnesia. He watches a woman named Lynn, who is then shot... Smack on the head. This boy holds so much amnesia. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> he watches as a woman named Lynn is shot by a hitman and collapses into the junk below. There, Sissel meets Ray, a talking red lamp that tells him that he's a very special ghost, and he can execute ghost tricks to manipulate objects in his environment. Additionally, Sissel can go back four minutes before a person's death in hopes of changing fate and preventing them from dying. Lastly, Ray also reveals that the dark end of all spirits is that by morning, they will fade away from existence. The clock is ticking. Despite being very confused by all this, Sissel decides that he can't stand by and watch someone die, so he rewinds time by four minutes and begins plotting to save Lynn. After learning how to use his ghost tricks, Sissel saves Lynn from the hitman, crushing him beneath a wrecking ball. Ray then also reveals to Sissel that spirits can travel via telephone lines as long as he has possessed the telephone line or that the line is currently active. As the call from the person, or, uh, as the call from the person ordering the hit arrives at the junkyard payphone, Sissel jumps onto the line and travels to the villain's lair. Ray bids him farewell and tells him that he is the only one who can solve this mystery. Lynn is the key to Sissel's identity. In the bizarre lair of the two blue-skinned men, Sissel observes them briefly and learns, yes, they ordered the hit on Lynn, and they also had a deal with Sissel, who he pulls up on their computer. Another hitman calls his boss, saying he's at Lynn's apartment, waiting to kill her. Sissel jumps on the line and travels to Lynn's apartment, finding a young girl named Camilla tied up and a dead Pomeranian on the floor, shot by the hitman. With no other leads, Sissel jumps four minutes into the past to save the dog's life. Here, he is able to converse with the dog's spirit, learning their name is Missile. Missile and Sissel both agree that they need to do something, but Missile is a dog and only likes to bark. Through some ghost tricks and puzzling, Sissel lures Missile under the sofa, leading Camilla and her doggy to safety, away from the assassin's prying eyes. Without the telephone active, though, Sissel begins to plan his next move and makes his way to the next door apartment, hoping to use the neighbor lady's phone to continue his search. After some brief interactions with the family, Sissel is able to jump back to the junkyard where he finds Lynn has been arrested for murder. His murder. He briefly encounters Inspector Cabanella, a wacky inspector who seems to know Lynn in some way. 
and then hears a shot ring out and hurries to the junkyard office where Lynn is being detained, only to find that she's been sniped and killed for a second time this evening. Sissel rewinds time once again and gets a chance to speak to Lynn's spirit this time. She briefly thinks she's Inspector Cabanella, but then corrects herself and gets very, very excited about solving her own death. Upon stopping the sniper, Lynn's death is undone once again, and Sissel and Lynn part ways, as Sissel returns to the office to find out how the timeline has changed. So, uh, that is art one of Ghost Trick that we have played, chapters one through four. Uh, this game, I believe, is 18 chapters, so we are kind of dividing it up into a couple chunks here. It's relatively short, uh, all said, mm -hmm. at least as far as video games go, uh, you know, 10 to 12-ish hours uh, to play through. And uh, yeah, as far as gameplay, it's not a visual novel. Instead, you've still got a lot of text and a lot of dialogue and a lot of characters talking to you and that sort of thing. But instead, you are represented like by a little tiny spirit on the screen and you can possess items that are in the environment, and you have like a beam that comes out of you that allows you a certain amount of range to jump to another object. And, you know, each object is kind of specified by the game. It's not like you can jump to any object in the whole room, you know, but you can kind of go, oh, there's a telephone here, there's a lamp here, there's a book here, that kind of thing. And you can jump to those objects, and sometimes you can make those objects do something, like you can make the lamp bend over, or the book open, um, or the fan spin harder, that kind of thing. Uh, and you have to make things happen that will eventually change somebody's fate and save them from dying. Uh, the other thing I should mention before we really dive into things, I know I'm doing a lot of preamble here, is that we are swapping who has played these games. Uh, for Ghost Trick, Tiago and I are the ones who have already played Ghost Trick before. Whereas Desi and Rose are the ones who are newcomers this time around. Should we change the intro? I did the intro the same way. <laughs> I'm just saying. Yeah. Back up, I, redo it. Start I didn't it. Even oh, yeah, I got to redo it. it. But let's scrap everything <laughs> to, that we've done so far. Welcome to Author Autopsy Report. My name is Tiago Dutra. <laughs> I'm joined by. Wait, my don't dox yourself. Good... <laughs> they know my last name. They know your last name. That's right. It's on your Twitter. It's on my fucking twit. Bam. I don't know why I was British. I don't know why. Oh. Um, <laughs> <laughs> We're still we're still in mocking British people mode from the last. There's no, game. as far yeah. as I'm concerned, there's no British people in this game. But so I played this game. I want to say, like a couple of years after high school, so that was like ten years ago. Um, I played it. I loved the shit out of it. I maintain no memory from this game. I actually straight <laughs> up like I know the ending because like a lot of trauma happened between then and now. Uh, well, no, but, like, I remember the game, like, the game was, like, I played it, and I remember thinking, like, holy shit, this game's really fucking good. The other people play this game? The answer was no. Um, <laughs> at the time. At the time. But now we have a chance to rectify that using the very powerful voice of media. Yeah, it's, I mean, it's one of those games that I spent so much of my life having people telling me, like, you gotta play this game. It's so good. And me going, wow, that sounds good. And then not playing it because I'm an asshole. But now no, I, have I mean it. <laughs> it's it's one of those things where right when people build something up too much in your mind, uh, mm -hmm. it has a danger of not living up to it, right? And yeah. or or I'm just Ghost... crabby and it's great, <laughs> which happens <laughs> or, or... to me a lot. <laughs> and the thing with Ghost Trick as well is that um, this is this is almost like a a meme in the Ghost Trick fandom, right? Is that fans of Ghost Trick will say, you got to play Ghost Trick. you got to play Ghost Trick. It's amazing. It's amazing. And somebody will say, but why? What's good about it? And then Ghost Trick fans will go, I can't tell you. <laughs> and it's about because, ghosts. Yeah, I might because, bet somebody if they did that. Because almost anything you say about this game, aside from the very basic premise, uh, unfortunately starts to get into spoiler territory because there are a lot of revelations about this game, uh, it, it, like in the story here. And it has multiple twists and turns as you as you make your way through. Um, so it's kind of like you kind of just got to go, well, it's about a guy who's a ghost and he's trying to solve his own murder and he can move objects around. And trust me, the story is really good. <laughs> yeah. Um... There's a dog in it. 
I I like <laughs> after <laughs> there's a miss of the fucking the star of the show. <laughs> Are we going straight to the dog? <laughs> I mean, yeah, the real main character. No, Missile. let's. I mean, we don't have to go straight to the dog. So, like, <laughs> poor Missile. I just, we'll Missile's go... very relatable to me personally. Missile's just a fucking cute. Missile, like, may be the cutest dog in video games because Missile has the voice. You know what I mean? Missile's, like, even Missile's, Missile's attitude. Real cute. <laughs> His Missile's... personality is very distinctive, too. It, yeah. It, it, it's a really well-written portrayal of how dogs behave right oh like if, yeah if, if you tell me if you tell me like oh like it's a, it's funny because missiles like oh they bark a lot and he's like oh and i want to save my mitra- mistress i want to save camilla so she doesn't die kind of thing yeah so how I gotta, do we do that but i'm dead Barking. but, bark and, but yes all i can do is bark <laughs> yeah yeah i don't know anybody who does that <laughs> and Sissel's like she? can you do anything else buddy and missiles like no <laughs> no, yeah, I, dear, dear listeners, same missile, same. We uh, my uh, there's a dog in my life who is basically exactly that. <laughs> Just l- nothing else going on other than must must bark. Yeah, uh, exactly. I've got uh, she's got no brain cells in there. It's only barking. <laughs> it's really <laughs> it's so relatable. I'm playing this game and I'm like listening to missile bark. I'm listening to the dog bark and I'm like, here we all are. Very yep. good. All right. Let's do the actual so, um thing now. Yeah. So we, we start out and it's, it's almost stage like kind of the way it opens. Like the yeah. stage light opens up on Sissel's dead body, just kind of slumped over. And then the light widens so that you can see Lynn and the assassin pointing his gun uh, at her and he is called a uh, nearsighted Jigo. Uh, and that's he because shotgun. he uses a shotgun and he just uh, gets close enough to kill you with a shotgun. With a gun. Yep. That's how I play Apex Legends. And uh, and then yes, then uh, as Sissel awakens as as his little spirit form, he's like, "Damn, I don't know what anything is and what's going what's going on right now." And uh, thankfully, the Pixar lamp is here to talk to him and tell him, like, hey, bro, it's all good. You're a very special spirit who can possess the, objects. The most special boy on Earth. I, um, so good. I actually, I hate to do this, I want to walk us back to the loading screen, because oh, sure. I opened this game up and the sickest song on Earth started playing. And I was like, uh, yeah, okay. The, the <laughs> yeah, that song does kind of bop. Yeah. It's pretty yeah. good. It's pretty yeah, good. It's I was like, damn, this is great. I'm in. I'm sold. I haven't even started the game yet. So, uh, pretty good game design. A little person known as uh, Masakazu Sugimori, mm-hmm. who did the music for uh, another game we might know called Ace Attorney 1. <laughs> that track. Yeah, the, the one Crazy. with the best songs. Uh, I... He also did music for Beautiful Joe. Uh, oh, as well, yeah. and also murder by numbers. Uh, he, so he's uh, got a got quite a storied career here. Big old resume. I I remember um, talking to a friend recently about like this is just like an overarching thing. Is that like the DS, the Nintendo DS had a lot of like weird fucking games on it, and like it's it's I think it's the like last time I feel like games were really fucking weird. Yeah. Um. And this is definitely one of those games where it's like it's just kind of fucking weird, and that's good. You know what I mean? We they don't make more exactly. weird, games. more weird games. I don't more... as much as I love to be fucking cozy and wholesome. Fuck off with that shit. Make it weird, <laughs> <laughs> dude. We cannot go into how much uh, the wholesome directs right now. <laughs> I mean, this is a pretty short segment, so I, I'm a little more loosey goosey than usual because I'm like, yeah, we got time. Yeah. That's true. <laughs> the beautiful part about Ghost Strike is that this shit is like ten to fifteen hours. So like, uh, I was dre- I was like, oh my god, I'm so behind. You know, now, my th- th- switch those died, are and I had to short. like reactivate it with the power crystals or whatever. But nope, I was done. <laughs> the crystals. The power. There was there some kind of ceremony for turning your switch back on <laughs> after it lost battery. <laughs> yeah. Perform Listen. the ritual. <laughs> You were truly, you were truly tricking your own switch back to life. I had, yeah, I had to. Oh my god, uh, you went back four minutes. I <laughs> plugged your switch in before it died. 
<laughs> and it was like, hey, you haven't played Animal Crossing in a while. And I said, that's fine. Don't talk to me. This isn't, <laughs> this isn't New Leaf. Get out of here. <laughs> oh, my God. Wait, did you? All right. We, I'll ask you so, about New Horizons. We can talk afterwards. about that after the podcast. Yeah. So, um, so you talk. Uh, so Sissel gets to talk to Ray, who explains all of his powers that he Ray has the now lamp. as a ghost. Did we mention that? Yes, Ray is Ray the, lamp, is the, the lamp. Pixar lamp who, who's talking to you. Yeah, red Pixar lamp, red mm. red lamp. Yeah, copyright. Distinct. And he uh, he says like, yeah, you're gonna disappear by morning, and you're gonna you know disappear into the ether. So that sucks. But you know you can do some some crazy stuff in the meantime, and you you gotta solve uh this mystery that I'm telling you to solve, which involves you tracking down Lynn. And Sissel's kind of like, well, I kind of want to figure out who I was. And Ray's like, don't worry about it. Those are one and the same thing. Figure out who you are and also track down Lynn. It, it, they'll lead you to the same place. So go ahead. And Sissel's like, uh, okay. <laughs> yep. Why uh, do you know so much? <laughs> I, I, I'm going to put this out here. I don't trust Ray. You don't Ray trust is Ray? lying about everything. Why would Ray lie? I don't know. Why wouldn't he? Uh, I... <laughs> Fair, good point. I have no ghost. evidence. I don't. He's like, oh, you're a special boy. Oh, <laughs> do this thing. Don't worry. It'll help you. Maybe. But maybe yeah, not. I, I think it's interesting that, like, after... I played this game before any Ace Attorney game, and, like, playing that game, and I was like, oh, this dialogue's really fucking weird. And after playing a lot of Ace Attorney games, I'm like, oh, okay, I see why the dialogue's really fucking weird. That's just how, like... That's just All how Takumi the, is. <laughs> the Takumi verse is yeah. is a strange place to be in. It felt very like, natural to me because I've been, you know, marinating the, in Ace Attorney. <laughs> marinating in the Takumi verse. <laughs> yeah, like like, like a, a fucking job. Matrix. <laughs> Oh, I was thinking more like a, a Matrix battery cell, just like a dude in all the <laughs> slime <laughs> plugged in. I, I, I went directly to food. I went to the Matrix. Oh, um, there we go. I you save Lynn. Lynn. Her, like one of the great designs, cool character, love her. She's a friend. She's a mad hang attitude. Good She's for her. Cute. She's I cute. did get a little stuck, like in the tutorial, because I was like, "Oh no, what does it want me to do?" Yeah, and it, so it, I, I got like mad and I went and looked something up, and I was like, "Oh, you gotta like." I didn't even know you could do this thing, you know. So now yeah. I'm like, okay, I know what to look for now. I'm all set. <laughs> the do, puzzles. Do we- do you guys want to talk a little bit about this like first puzzle? Cause I think we don't have to go into depth about all the puzzles, but I mm-hmm. think this one's like might be a good illustration of kind of what you're doing moment to moment in this game. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Um, you gotta, you gotta get upstairs and you're a little guy and you don't have a lot of range. So yeah. You, have to you jump in between things. Yep. You're a little moat, a little spirit. Uh, there's a very short range between you and the next object. Every object that you interact with has a single action. That not action, every object. Not every object, but a lot of objects have an action. Yeah. Such as I was trying unfold to interact or with turn on. Or open. Yeah. Or open. Or uh, open. open. Um, and these actions are normally meant to help you traverse. Because as a ghost, you cannot move just freely. You have to possess objects. It's kind of like right. a, a platformer, but they took away jumping, and there's only timing. Yeah, and yeah, that's uh, Zelda does that. It's it's very uh, Rube Goldberg machine, right? Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. You are bumping, yep. you are moving this one thing over so that now you can reach a little further to turn this one object on. And when it's like you turn on, uh, basically, like first you've got three objects that are the, your main way of ascending because you got to get from the bottom level of the junkyard to the top. And your three objects are a fan, a flag with a flagpole, and a blender. You mean a flagpole with a flag? Yeah. And eh. and a blender. <laughs> so what you have to do is you have to uh, turn on the fan so that it blows the flag and the string to the flagpole. And then you have to turn on the blender so that the string gets caught in the blender and winds it up and pulls the flag all the way up to the top of the flagpole. Now, there is an element of timing to this as well, because you have to quick jump to the flag before it gets pulled up all the way and before it's out of your range. And then you can essentially ride the flag up to the top and then jump to a couple other objects 
like a this bike. This is uh, where I got from stuck. There on out. I didn't realize I could turn on the blender. Right so, now I know. <laughs> weirdly enough, I did. I turned on the blender first, and then I turned on the fan, and then I jumped with the flag. Mm-hmm. Was that so, better? I mean, I don't know if it was better. It's just what I did. I, <laughs> there, it was one of those things. More, there's a little freedom here. There's a little freedom. There's a little flexibility. Um, it was just one of those things where, like, I've played this game before, but I don't remember what all these do. So I just mm-hmm. started turning everything on and seeing what would happen. <laughs> <laughs> I, I literally just interacted with literally everything that I could and then determined whether or not that was actually useful or not. Yeah, I think right. I'm going to be doing a lot of that. Um. Yeah, just fucking trick everything. Fuck it. Yeah. The worst thing that happens is that you hit the rewind button unless you go back. Right. And so, yeah, you do have the ability to rewind so that if you're like, well, okay, hang on. I actually goofed this up because you can get yourself into a state where you you do have only one option, which is to rewind and start over. But the game has checkpoints. I don't know if you guys notice this, especially yep. uh, in later ones, such as like when you're trying to save missiles life. Uh, there is like, I believe, two checkpoints in there. So you can kind of go, once you've gotten to a certain point of the four-minute countdown, uh, you are able to like just jump back two minutes instead of all the way to start. And it's not, I know we've been saying four minutes, but it is not a literal four minutes. You know what I mean? There's some wiggle room in there, I think. The story four minutes. I got to like a countdown because I took too long. It goes it says the number of four, and then a solid, like, ten seconds pass, and then it says three, and it's right. like, all right, understood. <laughs> <Hold> I... on, guys. <laughs> yeah, it, it, it gives you plenty of room to, to uh, make, 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 your, make your jumps there. And I wouldn't be surprised if, after it says one, it, it's got, like, a whole 30 seconds before it actually, you know... There's, like, uh, a zero, I think, yeah. Yeah, so, now, does anybody... You guys might already know this, but uh, I'll say it for sake of podcast. Does anybody know why it's four minutes and not any other number? I can guess why, but I uh, I don't know. Does anyone else know? I don't. Yeah, I have I have approximate guess, but also I might be wrong. The Iron so. Maiden song. No, nope. never mind. It's just because uh, of the fact that four is considered unlucky in Japanese uh, oh, in yeah. the Japanese oh, okay. language. That's that's kind of what I also, huh? It sounds. Four is pronounced she, which is the same as the word for death. So it is basically, yeah. you know, it, it it's just kind of like a pun, essentially, is what's going on here. You know? A time pun. I yeah. suspected that might be it, but I wasn't 100% sure. Yeah, so I, I thought that, and then I was like, well, what if it's some weird reason, like a developer really likes number four or something? <laughs> um, yep, nope, it's just a question. <laughs> so, like, we, we go back and forth through a lot of items we crush a uh, hitman to death with a wrecking ball it's very looney tunes he yeah like you splat him with the wrecking ball and then like the ball moves and you see like his flattened like body against it and it's like is he dead though like that dude died right did we kill that guy is he a we, ghost we, now? Yeah, we live in a universe in which people are getting shot in the chest with shotguns and dying I mean, Puppies are getting shot with a rifle, yeah, <laughs> nearly that, point that... blank. But also, you can get smashed by a wrecking ball and roll away like a little cartoon paper dude. <laughs> yeah, we, yeah, we smush multiple guys. Yeah. We just drop so... heavy objects on people. I think there will be more of that. <laughs> Do you think <laughs> that prediction. we can? Can we go four minutes into their past and try to save them? <laughs> <laughs> I. Um... That's getting complicated. So what happens is that like we have to save. Um... I already forgot her name. I was going to call her Antonio. It's Lynn. I don't know why. Ta- <laughs> what? <laughs> Antonio is just the name that like so came is, up in my mind. It is pronounced Lynn, right? There's like an Lynn. extra E in there that threw me for a fucking Lynn. Yeah, it's, it's like a silent E. Yeah. It's the white E. It's it's just there, you know? Hey, I hate silent letters. Fuck that shit. Oh, uh, <laughs> Looking at you, Lynn, France. Uh-huh. Lynn calls her... We're moving from the UK to France now. Her roommate? <laughs> what well, I don't I don't remember what their relationship is, but her roommate Camilla, who's like I got a teenage girl with a dog, vibes. little sister. But she never it's not, outright says. It's not says made clear sister. at this point in the story. Yeah, yeah. So like at this point, I'm like, now this is a weird like mystery game. That's probably like I don't know the daughter of some noble or some shit. I don't know. 
Um, I like how I you don't you remember do anything, know. which is great. I straight up don't remember, Rose. I'm telling oh, you right okay. now, what You're... I remember from this game is the ending puzzle, and that's it. I don't, I, like, everything in between, Chicken's gonna get involved eventually. Uh, like, I, I can't Damn, spoilers. give you t- no, we know I, about the chicken already. You, we did. You did get to see the the, the yeah. fried chicken. Here. Chicken, we're already aware of. All right. All right. So like, <laughs> it's it's like one of those things where like, if I think back about it, I'm like, I guess that happened, but it's like I'm not really sure. It's kind of like a dream. Like a fever so I'm dream. Go- <laughs> I, like I, it's I'm going through this on pure muscle memory. Uh, you have to like help Camilla and her dog live. So you gotta travel through Missile's timeline and Missile, best character in the game. That's what I remember for sure is that Missile is the best character in the game. Um, Missile is great. Missile's perfect. Also, no notes. There's that real life like fucking salon out there in the world that has like an image of Missile as their fucking sign. Did you guys oh, ever really? see this? There's sure. like, a I'm real sure store. I saw this is great for somewhere. podcasting, but yeah, let's do this. <laughs> <laughs> there, All right, if you look it up, put it on the podcast picture. Put it, yeah, we'll put it in, in the your notes. mind. Don't look this up because you'll probably find a ghost trick spoiler. But I promise you, out there in the world, like in another country, there's like some dog salon that has a picture of Missile as the like sign outside the store. And I remember someone tweeted about it. It was just like, holy shit, is that the dog from Ghost Trick? <laughs> um, and that's like a core memory in my mind. Um, we get to save Missile by leading him around the apartment, getting him to bark at things, which causes the neighbor MILF to, um, to knock shit over by banging on the wall. The neighbor yep. MILF. The neighbor MILF. Uh, let's just get out of the way. She's a MILF. We're moving on. Uh, sure. Maddie, for real, for real, we got it. Is uh, is uh, is now a good time to talk a little bit about the real life missile? Oh, yeah. I, missile's based on a real dog. Uh, if you're not aware, Shu Takumi had an, a real dog named Missile who was a Pomeranian. I'll put a picture in the show notes as well so you can see this beautiful little boy. Uh, missile uh, passed away in 2018. Uh, at 11 years old um uh, so he he was lost uh, a real one for real yep he was he was a beautiful little dog uh who basically shutakumi adored and put in this game uh if i understand the timeline correctly missile in ace attorney was the name of the dog at the, that they named at the time shutakumi then used that name for his dog once he got oh, there. and okay. then then ah. he had missile when they were creating ghost trick ghost trick he originally came up started to come up with the ideas during ace tourney three uh and then after apollo justice was completed that's when he like got to move into full development on ghost trick and uh and yes so that's that's why uh that's why missile gets to be in the game is because well hey gotta have your dog Listen, in the if game I made a video immortalized game, forever all you know? of my <laughs> pet creatures in the game would be named after mine my own pets your pet creatures my little dude da- <laughs> my little doodads my little, yeah. little guys They're oh creatures. you actually put pictures of shutakumi and his dogs in here holy shit yeah. he looks so happy walking this dog oh my god <laughs> they are trotting <laughs> that is a cute dog. it is it is a very wholesome it's a very wholesome image so yeah i'll have to put that in the show notes Legit, the yes. cutest so, this in is the world. this is you can feel it, right? Like once you like, I don't know. I to me, it feels like it oozes out of the game. The love for this dog character and how he writes them yeah. is like, oh yeah, no, I just this is the personality of my dog. I am yeah. just putting this into the game. You know, this is my dog wholesale. that I love, right? Uh, um, so yes, it's, as it's, any it's pet owner would. Mm-hmm. It's also uh, like interesting to see Camilla's relationship with Missile because Camilla's like kind of clumsy. She kind of breaks a lot of shit. Mm-hmm. Apparently, all the time, and she's like, "Oh, we'll just blame it on you, Missile." And then, like, Missile's like, "All right, I love you." <laughs> <laughs> Sounds yeah. great. Sounds great. Except he yeah. doesn't talk. He only talks to you when he's a ghost. Um, otherwise, he just barks all the fucking time. He's the dog. He can barely understand consequences. But yeah, once you boy. save Missile, uh, there, then you—I don't know if you anybody tried this. You can reconnect to Missile then. Oh, I yeah, tried one... it immediately, and missiles. And you can like, talk to I him then again. Being dead. Yeah, missiles. Like I remember that. I remember all that. <laughs> and you're yeah, like, wait you... a minute, what? <laughs> that, we're friends now. Like you missile. remember, like all these little adventure, the little adventure your pets have when you're not at home. You know. Oh my goodness. So 
So yes, here's something important to realize. Then Honestly, this still remembers. So the... excited to figure out the goofy things that Hanzo and Luke do when we're not home. <laughs> yeah, uh, like the thing to keep in mind here now is that yeah, Missile remembered those four minutes. Sissel can talk to him. The only reason why that was not the case the first time for rescuing Lynn is because her spirit her it was like knocked out. Essentially, it hadn't like awoken at the time. Yeah. Uh, eventually. The second time you rescue Lynn, uh, her spirit is way more active and she immediately like wakes up and starts talking in spirit form. So presumably you get better with could... practice. It's just you just have to die multiple times. Wow. Well, yeah. See. Well, and and she's very excited about it. Yep. <laughs> she's awesome. so thrilled to solve her own death. <laughs> yeah, yeah. You have after uh, saving Camille, you travel through your neighbor's uh, phone. Like, your neighbor, who is apparently, like, dating the fucking senator or some shit? Some kind of, like, grand ambassador? There's, like, yeah. some oh, sad something. dad there that I am going to check out later and see what's Yeah, good. some kind of politician or, or some kind of guy, yeah. Yeah, you, like, talk to a politician. Like, I, I went through there because I was like, oh, yeah, I forgot about this guy. And then I was like, ah, oh, this isn't actually relevant to the plot. I'm going to leave. <laughs> yeah, uh, I, I went through because I just pressed the first option I got, and I was like, whoops. And I was like, oh man, this guy's having a terrible day, but his I got hot better wife shit left, to though. do. His very hot writer wife. Yep, and she's writing a steamy prime minister fanfic. Ugh. Dude, oh, she's writing a fanfic about her own relationship. That's not fanfic, that's just... <laughs> no, that's fanfic, it's self-insert. Yeah. <laughs> that... Also, like... let, let your daughter go home. Your daughter... Jesus. Listen, it, they're having like a weird like custody battle over the prime ministership. It's it's weird. Anyway, we fucking leave these two because they're not relevant right now. We have to go like talk to Lynn, and by talk right. to Lynn, I mean go back to the junkyard where um, Lynn is being held on a like suspicion of murdering us because our gun was apparently the murder weapon. Uh, no, her gun was the murder weapon. Apparently, yes, yeah. And uh, then she's being sh sniped down by someone named, like, Foresight Jim or something. What's her name? Uh, this what? is One Step Ahead Tango. <laughs> yeah, that's what I said. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> I mean, here's the thing. The, the, the One Step Ahead Tango bit, because he shows up in Lynn's apartment first, right? Because yeah. he's one step ahead. And then he keeps doing things where he says, oh, yeah, I already did that. I already did that. Every time the the guy, the boss who ordered the hit is talking to him on the phone, he's like, and don't forget to do this. And he's like, yeah, I already did that. He's like, oh, you're one step ahead of me again. You know, we'll, he's like, we'll talk I want to raise. About my raise. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. And he's like uh, making plans to become CEO of Hitman. It's very, it's very a uh, shoot to style joke, right? Of just repeating the bit until you've completely exhausted all yeah. options of it. And then just keep going, wrap it up in a nice package. And then we are done with it. Right. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Uh, so uh, yes, yeah, he, we, one step ahead. Kill him. Yes, and one step ahead, Tango is the one who is also sniping Lynn at the junkyard as well. And uh, there, there's like a bit where you have to, first you are at your body again, right? And there are two uh, cops and a, like a coroner, like inspecting your body. Uh, did anybody get excited at these two cops <laughs> who look vaguely familiar? <laughs> I was green. wondering if if it was going to be, uh, and here's the attorney, but no. <laughs> yeah, it's like they're not, they're but also they have the same suit colors as Payne and, and Phoenix, right? Yeah. Mm -hmm. um, Wait, yeah. what? Really? I did not pay attention to that at all. Oh, that was the it's first just, thing I noticed. Is a, well, The one cop has a blue suit with a red tie, and the other uh, cop has a green suit with a red tie, just reminiscent of, of Payne and Phoenix. They're not truly like supposed to be those characters it's just supposed to be like a oh i, I kind of recognize that color scheme kind of thing but uh i will say i i brought this up on the let's play when this game came out originally on the ds and we saw little tiny screenshots of this game way in advance uh can you i'd like for you to imagine for yourself how the internet behaved when they saw little tiny screenshots of a tiny green suited and a tiny blue suited dude in ghost trick, oh, right? Where they can't oh make out the God. details, right? Of oh, their faces. <laughs> like a and go, wait a minute, minus. is this set in the Phoenix Wright universe? So much misinformation <laughs> was going on. The yeah, attorney verse. Uh, yeah, until we found out later that no, that was not the case at all. <laughs> I like to think that this story is taking place while Maya is being accused of murder. 
somewhere else across the city, basically. Yeah, like, across the city, Mai is being accused of a new murder, and Phoenix Wright has to go solve that. Uh, this are, is just we, a... are we in Japanifornia still? Is this our location? I don't well, think Well, funny you bring Japan. that up, actually. This game was, uh, when they developed this game, uh, Takumi actually talked about this in a couple different interviews, where Ace Attorney had already been localized at this point, right? When he started working on this. The original trilogy had come out, Mm -hmm. And so they started working on this and he thought to himself, well, now that I know that this game could come out in America, I'm going to make this intentionally developing certain parts of the game so that they can be localized easier now. Uh, So you may notice this in the game. There's no real uh, like writing anywhere in the game. There's there's, yeah, no there's no there's no language. Yeah. There's no text, there's no language. They 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 basically hide I think there might be one or two small instances of it where you have to have it, but for the most part there is no text in the game so that you do not have to translate any of it from Japanese to English. Uh and yes, then he also intentionally made it uh, you know, a bit more universal so that you could read it as being in set in Japan or being set in America uh because he Tried to make sure that whatever shows up in this game is a bit more easy to localize, essentially. So yeah, hmm. read that... it however you'd like. <laughs> basically, is, is kind of how he intentionally made it. I l- I kind of like that, but I do also love the like outrageous hoops that had to be jumped through to localize this attorney. <laughs> like, yeah. I I think that created something beautiful and unique. Um... Exactly. Uh, you know? I will simply just headcanon this as uh, in the same universe, which means Maya will summon Sissel's ghost one day. <laughs> uh, or at least I think. I don't Maya know. with big, like, yellow banana hair, yeah, basically. Yeah, I mean, so, <laughs> so Ray the Lamp says we'll disappear at uh, at sunrise, and I have no reason to not believe him, but I also have no reason to believe him, so <laughs> we'll I think, fucking see. I think at sunrise, something will happen. I, I suspect that something <laughs> will happen. I can't wait for things to occur in this game that we'll play. I suppose yeah. events, <laughs> perhaps. I love I love events. Um. Oh yeah, so, so, uh, in the we office, have, <laughs> we have to so, so like office. Uh, Lynn's doing her own little like investigation while being accused of a murder. She gets sniped through the window, and we have to like leave the office to go like get fucking Tango out there. Mm-hmm. And Tango is like, I refuse to be shooting while there's light out, and he has to like use the spotlights to like maneuver him into a specific location. Here's what I didn't know. When you're traveling to the office for the first time, in order to travel to the office, you have to like hop on the detective's bike. Uh well not detective, Inspector Cantabella not Cantabella, Jesus. <laughs> yeah, Cabanella. Uh, Cabanella. Yeah, I'm gonna fuck I'm gonna fuck that up too, so we're and, good. Inspe- we could just call him the inspector. Um, that we have guy. to, like, we can hop around on the inspector's bike. I just, like, absentmindedly was just, like, ghost tricking everywhere, and there's, like, an option where you can get to one of the spotlights while you're on the bike. I turn it on without thinking about it, and this fucked me, because you can only have two searchlights on at a time. <laughs> and, I was, and that was the wrong one. That is the one you do not want on. And I was like, fuck, I should have... I should have tricked everything. I actually, <laughs> Tiago, I also did exactly the same thing. <laughs> I, I, was just I like... almost died the first time that I tried it because I was like, what the fuck is going on? And then I was like, oh shit, that spotlight I turned on like 10 minutes ago. Fuck. I was like, I was like a goof. I was just like, oh yeah, cool. I can turn the searchlight on, huh? And then yeah. moved on. <laughs> that will fuck, like. It's I I like the like minutia of that in this game was just like oh yeah that kind of action can like mess up a puzzle if you don't think about it. I like these puzzles being very like in diegetic I would say because you have to like cre- manipulate the world to like have the outcome that you want to occur. Mm-hmm. It reminds me of uh puzzles. Yeah. <laughs> that yeah it, it reminds you of a puzzle you might say. I was gonna say something, and I was like, "Ah, oh, no, this might sound too pretentious." So I'm gonna move on. <laughs> <laughs> well, how about Inspector Cabanella? We didn't really get too much of a he... full character debrief of him yet. We'll we'll get more of him later. Shout out yeah. to Sala. This is one of Sala's like girlfriends. 
it's a, it's a boy. Baby we, can't, we, can't, we can't just like say that. You need to. Uh, uh, I, I mean, <laughs> Desi, but... my wife. We need to establish context. We have a friend, a dear friend of ours, who is obsessed. No, with I said uh, I set it up. You give the context. <laughs> Me? <laughs> you brought up Sala. I don't even go. No, 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 not you, Ben. Ben. We have a we have a dear friend who is obsessed with this character. That's the extent of the context you need. Anyway. What did y'all think of Inspector Cabanella? Uh, I diagnosed him with gay. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. That's fair. Inspector Cabanella. Dancing down the stairs. <laughs> Inspector Cabanara. Um, mm-hmm. He is very Michael Jackson themed. Like, he dances and moves everywhere. There's never, like, all of his movement is with a rhythm. And it's, he, every time he moves into a room, he does, like, a full like Michael Jackson pose at you. Yeah. Uh, it's very that was all good. I knew about this character going into it was that he just he danced everywhere. Uh he calls uh, everybody baby nonstop. Everyone <laughs> just baby non fucking stop. Um he call he calls somebody on the phone, he's like, hey baby, and it's like that's you don't know who's on the other end of that phone line. Like he literally gets somebody else that he's expecting. And he just uh, rolls with it. <laughs> uh Inspector I'm just gonna call him the inspector. I straight up can't remember his last name. I I'm really trying. I'm gonna try one more time. Cabanella. You got it. Cabanella. Yeah. Cabanella. I'm gonna, I'm gonna call him Inspector Cabanella. You can call him Cabby. Mm, I'll think about it. So Inspector Cabby, um, he is like Lynn's my protege. Of course, when she's accused of murder, I'll st- I'll dance my way in to try to save her. Also, he doesn't own a car. He has a bike and a and an umbrella. Um, he's very whimsical. He's a very whimsical guy. Yeah. Truly a Takumi character. Um, and obviously when Lin gets killed, he's really sad about it. Uh, we go save Lin. Lin will, Lin will remember this. Keep the fucking telltale font in the corner because she was conscious <laughs> for this one. Uh, we save her by smushing a sniper. And then I think that's where the chapter ends. Am I wrong? Yeah, after we get back, we're, like, returning to the office to see how us saving Lynn has changed the timeline. And, mm. uh, yeah, that's kind of where we left off. Um, the The only major characters I could really think of are, like, Lynn, Inspector Cabby, Camilla, because she's Lynn's roommate, the the blue... What is this? I forget what his dude is. He's just a guy... He's a like rich, evil villain who just wants we Lynn We have not dead. gotten his name yet, yeah like uh, it's also i every like killer has I'm been very like, excited when you do find out his name don't I worry can't, i straight up can't remember <laughs> rose uh, i i will be very excited when rose finds out his name oh no his, no oh no <laughs> i know the name oh no, uh, no i do don't too. worry don't Honestly, worry it's, it's not do. the one you're thinking it's it's okay, not victor all right Oh, okay. So, well, shit. Um, I guess well, I don't. That's the one that does the most damage to me, so I'll survive. Yeah, don't worry. Well, unless his um, name is Rose, that would be funny. We have, <laughs> we have, yeah. <laughs> we have, thick. like, two, question mark? Maybe three other major characters to be introduced to yet. Um, but we've met the most, most of the cast. Uh, but you will get more detail. Like, obviously, those villains in their weird secret lair that we saw, like, we're obviously going to get more of them. And we're obviously going to get more of the, uh, you know, rich uh, writer lady and her uh, estranged husband, partner, whoever he is, you know, who's who's a politician. I think wh- I think if you go there, like they, they do say what his name is, you know, or his title or something like that. He's so, prime minister. I, they call him justice minister. Justice minister. I, I just didn't. I just wasn't going to say it if you guys hadn't already got gotten that. Is all. <laughs> I'm remembering things. Okay. Okay. I, I'm uh, deep in the sauce now. My it's coming. Oh, it's all coming back to me. Why did you make me? Hear it? <laughs> it's all coming back. It was. It was going to happen eventually. You were going to get like a, a a flashback. I remember playing this game on the DS, and all the like very smooth animations we got were pixely. And I mm-hmm. thought it was all pixel art back then. Was it not pixel art on the DS? Well, this is great because I actually have some notes about this to talk about this. And I was going to bring it up. <laughs> so thank you for that uh, segue. Uh, the style of the art was they they 
really wanted to have fully like fluid animation. It was fluid uh, were, as hell on the DS. Yeah, they were like, we want to nail 60 frames per second on the DS, which is like unheard of. So the way that they did that is all of these characters were made as 3D models, right? So they designed 3D models of them and then flattened them down into 2D pixel art, right? So they basically rendered them, flattened them, made them 2D, uh, you know, transparent GIFs. I, I, obviously, I'm oversimplifying, but for sake of description, flattened them down essentially into 2D transparent GIFs and then just play those out, right? Um, so that is how all this stuff is being rendered in the original DS game here in the remaster. I am not a hundred percent sure if they are actually running the 3d models themselves this time, or if they re-rendered the 3d models again and flatten them, you know, but now just in 1080p. Uh, mm -hmm. so I'm not sure exactly how they are accomplishing it. It is running in the RE engine, funnily enough. So I suspect yeah. That it is simpler nowadays to just run them as 3D models, right? I, I figure that's probably the easier move, but who knows? I could be off base. I will say that it does still look very good, and it looks still smooth as hell. Uh, it, it's a really striking style. It's like a really nice, flat, like, cel-shaded, you know, art style mm -hmm. uh, that's, that's really, really pops with all the bright colors that you have mm -hmm. going on here. Do you think they could port, like, re characters into this game because it's the re engine <laughs> you think they could run this on the re engine <laughs> i want to see Lady i mean Duma let's Crest come back in a week Ghost or two Trek. yeah uh, let's, let's come back in a couple weeks and see if people start modding the game to put oh other dear. models in if they can figure that out then i guess they're rendered in 3d dude if imagine not, if leon maybe kennedy met <laughs> sissel <laughs> <laughs> two baby girls meeting two baby yeah. girls meeting Wait, it's, I don't know if I would call Sissel baby girl. We're going back. <laughs> we're going back to the Professor Layton versus Wesker fight again. We're like, I right, know, yeah, and I want that iteration. to happen so badly, <laughs> I Rose. I would I love, love it if Professor Layton went to like the fucking Raccoon City mansion and fucking <laughs> solved all those Prof puzzles. Professor all Layton all the puzzles. Would be handling this shit right now, he would be now. Great Luke, at reload this. the shotgun quick. <laughs> 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 yep. Um, I all right. We got I, I back to Ghost Trick. Uh, I yeah. don't know if I qualify Sissel as a baby girl. I'm gonna go ahead and say it. I don't know him well enough yet. I definitely feel like I'm. I'm like, oh, I'm excited to see where this goes. It's my I, character. I, I don't have. I enough... get to call them baby girl if I want. It's <laughs> but wait, wait, yeah, you know this court requires no. evidence. No. What do you mean no? No. Death is, death is pleading the fifth. However. That means that you can, you still have the right to go. Also, no, I disagree. You can disagree, <laughs> but I'm still, I'm still gonna, you know, I'm, he's baby girl. I don't know. Do, do, uh, how, but how? No. <laughs> God damn it. Is it a spoiler? We've got a lot of game yet to go. She Am doesn't I know own? anything. I've, I don't know. I don't know anything about this. I knew, I knew that the small handful of things that I knew were... The guy has a weird haircut. The mm. inspector does the dances and missiles in it. And then there's the there's a girl. <laughs> That's yeah. that that sure is the information that is also available to us. <laughs> I know we, to... we gotta go. Yeah, we're we're really <laughs> devolving here, I'm, but uh, this is going poorly. <laughs> we we will see more of Sissel. We will see more of Missile. Mm -hmm. uh, we will see more of all these characters. So you will be able to. Lynn. Uh, Cabela. Yep. Yeah, we'll be Camilla. able to figure out. Oh. Yep, Cabela's. Camilla's. Cabela's Big Hunt. Big Hunt. Cabela's. <laughs> Cabela's Big Hunt. Yep, 2023. Oh, uh, good so shape. yeah, you'll get to get a little bit of all these characters. Uh, so I think that uh, that puts us in a good spot to, yeah. to wrap up it's, here. It's a short little segment, so it's a short little podcast episode. Little you say that, but then people are going to look at the timestamps for this, and I bet it's going to say something like 50 minutes. Okay, so. fine. Well, we padded <laughs> it. Yeah. So, that'll do it for us this week, folks. Uh, you can follow the show on Twitter at Ace Attorney Pod, on co-host slash Ace Attorney, or on our website, updatedautopsy.report, to stay up to date on everything we do. 
you can watch all of our Let's Plays of Desi and I playing through the game with Iro uh, at youtube.com slash at Yotsuben. You can follow me on all social media sites at Yotsuben. Desi, where can people find you? Uh, at yes, this is Des for all your baby girl needs. <laughs> and Tiago? You can find me at Tiago as teacher for all your baby girl prosecution. And Rose? Um, you can find me at Rose Nonsense on Tumblr and sometimes co-host. Um, I choose not to comment about baby girls at this time. <laughs> Coward. <laughs> my, my opinions will remain my own. <laughs> Thank you, everyone. You can't handle my baby girl opinions. Get out of here. I have secrets. 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 <laughs> this evidence has not been required to be relevant to the case yet. <laughs> What's yeah, you have to relevant? prove it with evidence, Ducky, and nobody's done that yet. So <laughs> we're not playing Ace Attorney. This is ghost trick. Final I'll turn trick. into a lamp and call you baby girl if I want. I want evidence, Ducky. We all let's want evidence. Let's wrap up. <laughs> Thank you so much for listening. We hope that you will rate and review us on Apple Podcasts or your favorite podcast platform of choice. Next episode, we will be playing through chapters five through nine of Ghost Trick. See you next time. Bye. 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 <laughs> Bye. <laughs>